everyone, it's Michelle again with Tendine Design, and I am back, and we are ending week one of our Back to Basics series, and tonight is going to be our recap, as I have described in previous videos. Um, I will be recapping tight coils and loose coils tonight, so I will be redoing both of these shapes for you as well as going over any questions, comments, or feedbacks we had from previous videos. If you missed part one and part two, which part one was tight coils, part two was loose coils, I will put those links in the description below. And with that being said, let's get started. So, for tight coils, we'll work on those first. <coughs> Excuse me. We will take our strip of paper, which is Paplin, and it's a full strip and I have my slotted tool and this is the standard size slotted tool so we'll do this one first and we just slide the paper into the tool and I like to roll under the paper but you can certainly roll over the paper and so we just roll it make a tight coil and to support the coil on my tool, I have my index thumb behind my tool and my thumb over my tool. So we're coming to the end of it. <clears throat> now, while holding the end of the strip with my thumb and my index finger on the back, I'm just going to take my free thumb and slide it off my tool. Okay. Now while still holding it, I'm going to transfer it to my other index finger and thumb and just try and flatten out the end as much as I can. Okay. And then we will take a small dab of glue, which I'm using Lake City Craft Glue and just put a small little dab at the end and roll the remainder of the strip over and just hold it for a moment. Wipe away any excess. And then what I'll do is, is I'll take my tool and like a rolling pin like you would use for baking, I'm just going to go over the top of my coil. This is just to make it nice and flat uh oh, nice and flat on the top. So there you have the first one. Okay. And that was done using the standard slotted tool from quillingsupply.com. The next slotted tool I'm going to use is a fine tipped tool, and that is from Lake City Craft. And the process is the same. Unlike the slotted tool from QuillingSupply.com, this tool from Lake City Craft is open on both ends. So this one can take a little bit of getting used to um, with your paper slipping off. So just keep that in mind. And you'll notice a big difference in the hole in the center after I get done with this coil versus the first one that we did. Okay, and so just like the first coil, thumb holding the end of the strip, index finger on the back to support it, with my free thumb, slide it off. Transfer it to my other index finger and thumb. Try and make it as flat as you can. And we'll do our glue again. Okay, hold it there for a moment. Okay, and then we'll take our tool and we'll just do the same thing again. We'll roll it over the top just to make it nice and flat. And I'll bring in that other coil just for comparison as far as the center. You can see here just how small the hole is from the Lake City Craft versus 
the standard size one from quillingsupply.com. Okay, so that is tight coils. So now we'll move on to loose coils. And for that, I'm going to use the Paplin paper again. However, I've taken a strip, two strips actually, and I've cut them in half. So I'm using half the strip for each coil I'm going to make. And I'm also introducing the size board that I used the other night. So again, process is the same as far as getting it started. Just take our standard slotted tool and our strip of paper, slide it in. I like to roll under. And the first one's going to be a little bit more of a uncontrolled coil. Um, if you need a certain size coil, then that's when you would use the circle holes in the board. Okay, so slide it off. Give it a little bit of a flattening out. And then just let it loosely go on your board here. Okay, that makes a nice little coil. That's using the standard size one. And then we'll do the same process again for our Lake City Craft tool, which is the fine tipped tool. And there is, um, you know, there, there's no difference as far as the shape goes that these two tools make. It's just the size of the center hole, and really it's all preference. So there's no, there's no reason why you should use one tool over the other. Okay, we'll just let that one loosely go. And you can also notice too between the two sizes how much they relax out. Okay, now what we'll do is is we'll do the um, two circle holes here just to show you a more controlled coil and how that works. Process is still the same as with the tight coil though. When it comes to making shapes on your slotted tool, the process always starts out as a tight coil, pretty much. I don't know that there's ever an instance where it doesn't. Okay, so I'll just slide that off, flatten it out a bit, and then we'll gently lay it down and just gently let it go. Okay, you can see that it'll relax out and it'll only get as big as the hole is, so it won't get any bigger. And then I'll show you with the fine tipped. And because this fine tipped does not relax as well as the standard, we're just we're gonna go a size hole smaller just to show you. And like I said, I cut this paper the strips in half. The strips are 22 and 3 fourths inch long. So these strips are about uh, 11.375 inches long. Okay. I'll just go a size hole smaller. Okay. Now see, that wants to expand out even further. But because it's in that hole, it won't go any further than that. And you simply just pick it up with your tweezers at the end and you glue it. Okay? And that is loose coils. Okay, everybody. Well, that concludes the recap for week one. If you missed part one and part two of my video series, I'll link those in the description below. And I'll also include the schedule for next week for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And I will also go ahead and go over the question that was asked from my part two video, Loose Coils. And that was from Mary Kay, who asked about work boards. And so I'll just go over those real quickly. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first one that I used in my video series 
um, was from Quilled Creations and it has a plastic uh, circle size template and a piece of cork underneath it which allows you to use straight pins to hold in pieces while they glue or while you shape them so that's one that you can use another one that's similar but has a lot more sizes to it is a board by Paplin it has hearts, triangles, ovals, as you can see, squares, and it has a piece of cork underneath as well. And in this board, you can see why you would need straight pins to hold and shape your pieces. So that's another one. Another one that I really like, and it doesn't have a piece of cork behind it, and this I got off eBay, um, is just this piece of foam. And it has all these different size holes, and you can make a whole bunch at the same time. So if you have a big project that requires either tight coils, loose coils, um, you know, like I said, every shape pretty much originates from you getting out your slotted tool and, you know, rolling a tight coil. And then, then, then you turn it into a loose coil, a teardrop, you know, uh, even vortexes, those sorts of things. Um, so I will try and find the link for this one in eBay. It's been a while since I've had it. Um, and this is just, you know, a flimsy piece of foam. But I love this one because it has so many circles in it. Um, and then this one I have used in previous videos also. It is a wood. Nothing behind it, obviously. But it only has, you know, five different sizes. Um, starts out at 10 millimeters, goes all the way up to 30. So I like this one for just short demonstration videos also. I got that one from eBay as well, I believe, and I'll try and find the um, link for that as well. And I think that is, let me try, let me get out this other workboard here, excuse me. So this one is from Quilled Creations, and it's a grid guide. I'm not sure how well you can see that. There we go. And it has a circle grid on it. This would be great for making snowflakes or any kind of intricate design that needs a lot of symmetry. And it has a piece of cork in between it. And then on the back is just like a grid, you know, like you used to use in math class for plotting points and things like that. And then, and that I got off Quilt Creations. And then this last one was just a real cheapy one that I found on eBay. haven't even gotten it out of the package. I think I got like 10 in a pack. Um, and it has a ruler at the bottom as well as the circle size holes. So those are the work boards that I have. Um, and so Mary Kay, if there was anything else specific that you were wanting to know, if you want me to do just a video on work boards, I certainly can. Um, otherwise, I'll put all the links that I can in the description below, as well as for the products I used tonight. And if you have any further questions, you can always ask them in the comment section below. And then, like I said, here is the um, schedule for next week. And, um, and so I'll see you all on Monday. Thank you for joining me in week one of roughly six. Um, so I'll see you Monday with a fresh schedule. All right, guys. Bye.